In national news, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Sakhir Palace, where they discussed topics related to enhancing the development march of the country to enhance its progress in all fields. His Majesty thanked His Royal Highness and praised the country's honourable achievements, thanks to his efforts in leading the government work towards further progress, as well as adopting initiatives that enhance the development march, in addition to His Royal Highness constant follow-up that contributed to achieving major projects that serve the country and the citizens as well as enhancing the status of the kingdom. His Majesty then praised the remarkable success of the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain under the presidency of His Majesty the King and hailed the resulting constructive outcomes which will contribute to strengthening the unity of integration of Arab countries as well as achieve security, peace and regional prosperity. He appreciated the participation of his brothers, their Majesties and their Highnesses, the leaders of Arab countries and their contributions that ensure the success of this historic summit in order to achieve the aspired goals. His Majesty also praised the outcomes of his successful official visit to Russia and the positive discussions held with Russian President Vladimir Putin, which will enhance the historic partnership and the strategic cooperation in various fields that will benefit both countries. His Majesty also thanked President Putin for the warm welcome and generous hospitality. His Majesty then expressed aspiration to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping in his next official visit to China, which will form a new phase of relations between the two countries and strengthen cooperation for the benefit of the two countries and their peoples. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness to build bridges of cooperation and establish partnerships with various countries that are based on mutual respect and common interest. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain after an official visit to Moscow in response to the invitation by Russia's President Vladimir Putin. The two leaders discussed relations of friendship and cooperation in addition to recent regional and international developments of mutual concern. And during the visit, His Majesty also met with a number of Russian religious clerics. Upon arriving to Bahrain, His Majesty was welcomed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The visit of His Majesty the King to Russia was of great importance in strengthening friendly relations and bilateral cooperation and discussing current regional and international developments and issues of common interest. More in this report. In response to an invitation from the President of Russia, the visit of His Majesty the King to Russia aimed to discuss bilateral relations and areas of cooperation between the two friendly countries and the latest developments in the region. والقصد هو تجديد التعاون وتطوير التعاون في مختلف المجالات الثنائية كذلك من أهم أهداف الزيارة هو إطلاع فخامتكم على نتائج القمة العربية أصدقائكم العرب يكنون لكم كل محبة وكل تغدير لدور روسيا في يعني تعاطفها مع القضايا العربية العادلة ولله الحمد وكان اتفاق تام بأن نتوصل إلى مؤتمر للسلام دولي وروسيا هي أول دولة أتوجه لها بطلب دعم هذا المؤتمر ونرى اليوم نموا اقتصاديا واجتماعيا وامنيا على كل الظروف الصعبه 
اللي تمر فيها روسيا ومنطقتنا كذلك. Мы не видели с вами с 2016 года, хотя были в контакте все это время. И вот совсем недавно, в марте, в очередной раз разговаривали по телефону. В следующем году мы отмечаем 35 лет установления дипломатических отношений между нашими странами. Но за эти годы многое сделано. Сделано в строительстве отношений между нашими государствами. У нас хорошие контакты очень по линии МИДов и по очень многим вопросам международной повестки наши позиции близки. Совсем недавно, неделю назад, проходило было заседание Лиги Арабских Государств, где Бахрейн сейчас председательствует. И, конечно, мне было очень интересно узнать ваше мнение и о ситуации на Ближнем Востоке, и о том, как шло обсуждение этих проблем. During the meeting, several topics were discussed, including the development and growth of relations between the two countries, levels of cooperation, especially in the investment sector, reviewing the results of the Arab summit, a review of the rapid regional developments, the escalation and tension the region is witnessing as a result of the devastating war on Gaza, and the regional and international efforts aimed at a ceasefire and providing humanitarian aid to the civilian population without obstacles to alleviate the suffering of the people of Gaza. Gaza is one of the most important for us to stop this war today before tomorrow. His Majesty also visited the headquarters of the Federal Assembly of Russia. His Majesty praised the advanced level reached by the Bahraini-Russian relations in all fields, especially at the parliamentary and democratic levels, and the exchange of visits, experiences and expertise with regards to parliamentary and legislative work. Within the framework of His Majesty's official visit, His Majesty met with the President of Tatarstan, in which they praised the close friendly relations and opportunities for enhancing joint cooperation. His Majesty also met with the President of Chechnya, where they emphasize that the two countries are keen to strengthen cooperation in various vital aspects. His Majesty the King also met with a number of religious clerics in the Russian Federation. The Commander of the National Guard, Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, received the Director General of Military Operations at the General Command of the Pakistani Army, Major General Kashif Abdullah and his delegation at the presidential office in Sakhir camp. His Highness welcomed the Director General and his delegation, praising the continuous growth and prosperity witnessed in the country's joint relations and hailed the increase in cooperation, exchange of experiences and implementation of joint exercises and training between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army. The Director General thanked His Highness for his continued interest in developing bilateral cooperation and affirmed the depth of the fraternal relations between the two brotherly countries. The meeting also discussed topics of common interest. The BDF Women's Military Athletics team won the title of the World Military Half Marathon Championship held in Bosnia-Herzegovina from May 23rd to 26th after the female runners of the military team won top first places at the team and individual levels. While the men's team won third place at the team level in the championship which witnessed the participation of 260 male and female runners representing 32 countries in a new historic achievement for military sports. 
On the occasion, congratulations were expressed to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, by the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. He affirmed that the achievement is the result of His Majesty's support to sports in general and military sports in particular, and the BDF's support to military sports. The BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed pride in the achievement, which reflects the high spirit and strong determination of the team, adding that the achievement is the result of continuous efforts and support of the leadership for the military team to succeed in strengthening Bahrain's status in the global sports arena. He said that the achievement reflects the dedication and determination of the runners and demonstrates the progress achieved by military sports. He noted that the victory is a strong motivation to continue to improve the performance of the military sports teams. He also asserted that the achievement will lead to further achievements, expressing confidence in the capabilities of military athletes to achieve more victories. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Uwa Al Mubarak, made a field visit to the fourth constituency in the capital governorate to inspect the municipal projects being implemented within the third package projects for developing roads, sanitation, and municipalities in the presence of a number of officials. During the visit, the minister affirmed the keenness on continuing to implement vital service projects in a way that enhances the growing development pace and the comprehensive development in the country under the leadership of His Majesty the King and with the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. And Mubarak stated that the ministry had previously implemented the first and second phases of the development of Block 338, which turned it into to a distinctive tourist and entertainment area in Manama. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohamed Al Kabi, received the audit and evaluation team of the Federal Aviation Administration at the U.S. Department of Transportation, headed by the Director of International Technical Support, Luis Alvarez, within the framework of completing the Federal Aviation Administration's audit mission on civil aviation affairs at the Ministry. The minister stressed the importance of continuing to strengthen the partnership between Bahrain and the U.S. in all fields, especially in civil aviation, for the benefit of both countries. He pointed out Bahrain's keenness to follow up on the application of all international standards and to continue to achieve the high levels of safety in civil aviation. The audit by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration is one of the main requirements for issuing the necessary licenses to operate direct flights for national carriers to airports in the U.S. The Minister of Labour, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil Humaydan, met with the visiting delegation from the International Monetary Fund mission, headed by the Vice President of the Middle East Central Asia Regional Branch for Analysis and Policy, John Bloodhorn. Humaydan briefed the delegation on the most prominent labour achievements made by Bahrain in organising and developing the labour market, including developing national labour legislation in accordance with international international labour standards and reviewing the results achieved in terms of employment and qualification of Bahraini human resources in addition to developments in the implementation of the National Labour Market Plan. He also highlighted Bahrain's strategy towards encouraging investments that enhance the national economy and generate qualitative and attractive jobs that contribute to achieving comprehensive development. The head of the IMF delegation, meanwhile, praised the cooperation of the Minister of Labour and LMRA and their positive response in responding to the mission's observations and inquiries.
Under the patronage of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Prime Minister, the Bahrain Teachers College at the University of Bahrain held a graduation ceremony for the 12th batch of its students of the academic year 2022-23 and graduates of the first semester of the academic year 23-24. The event was attended by the Minister of Education, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the University of Bahrain, Dr. Mohammed Ben Mubarak Jama, ministers and officials. The Minister of Education delivered a speech expressing pride in the fact that the graduation ceremony is coinciding with the anniversary of the Silver Jubilee. He praised the educational achievements made during the prosperous era of His Majesty and hailed the support of His Royal Highness in this regard. He also praised the strategic plans, programs, initiatives and educational projects pursued by the government headed by His Royal Highness and its role in laying the necessary foundations for building a modern educational system that keeps pace with global transformations and building national competencies. The Kingdom of Bahrain has given teachers and education a top priority to achieve tangible development in education. Bahrain Teachers College prepares the students to become the best teachers and active partners in building generations. 731 students have graduated from the following programs. Bachelor's in Education, Postgraduate Diploma in Education, Higher Diploma in School Leadership, Higher Diploma in Leadership for Teachers, Higher Diploma in Special Education, in addition to the graduates of the Masters of the Educational Leadership Program from the University of Boston. I want to congratulate all of the students who've graduated today. We've assessed them rigorously and we know that they have achieved all of the competencies needed to become an excellent teacher in a Bahraini school. We've looked at all their competence in 21st century skills, we've looked at their competence in pedagogical skills in the classroom, in assessment skills and so on, and we know that they are ready. I'm also very, very proud of the first cohort from Boston University who've joined our graduation ceremony today. They've completed a master's in educational leadership with one of the top universities in the world, delivered to a specific Bahraini cohort, looking at the issues faced in Bahraini schools and making sure that they are ready to serve our nations. This graduation is a new achievement added to the Bahrain Teachers College in light of its distinguished educational and training achievements. The Dean of the Arab Diplomatic Corps and Ambassador of Bahrain to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, chaired the meeting of the Council of Arab Ambassadors in London in presence of Arab countries' ambassadors accredited to the UK. At the beginning of the meeting, Council members congratulated the Kingdom of Bahrain on the success of the 33rd Arab Summit held in Bahrain under the chairmanship of His Majesty the King. The Council appreciated the comprehensive vision of His Majesty the King and the great interest he gave to supporting Arab issues through constructive cooperation and effective initiatives focused on deepening strong fraternal Arab relations. The Council also expressed their appreciation for Bahrain's commitment to strengthening Arab cooperation and its effective role in achieving the goals of the summit and uniting the Arab ranks in facing common challenges. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, participated in the consecration and enthronement of the sixth bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Cyprus and the Gulf, Reverend Sean Sample, held by St. Christopher's Anglican Cathedral in cooperation with the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence in presence of res representative of the Bahraini community who welcomed the newly ordained bishop and shared with him the values of His Majesty the King's Declaration of Bahrain. The consecration service was held in Bahrain in recognition of the importance of the Gulf nations in line with the diocese and to celebrate Bahrain's vision of tolerance and peaceful coexistence. It is the first consecration of a bishop of Cyprus and the Gulf to take place outside of Cyprus and the first Anglican bishop is consecrated in Bahrain. This was made possible by His Majesty the King's vision of peaceful coexistence reflected in the welcome and generous respect for different faiths.
The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence organized a roundtable on recovery after conflicts with the participation of representatives of various religions and sects on the occasion of the visit of 60 representatives from the leadership of the Anglican Church around the world to participate in the consecration and enthronement of the sixth bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Cyprus and the Gulf, Reverend Sin Sample. The participants praised Bahrain as a model of peaceful coexistence between religions, cultures and civilizations under the leadership and enlightened vision of His Majesty the King with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. They expressed appreciation for Bahrain's humanitarian and civilizational model in dialogue and peaceful coexistence between all religions and sects, valuing the pioneering role initiatives at regional and global levels in spreading the culture of peace and religious and cultural pluralism and the contributions of Center for the Good of Humanity. Shura Council and Arab Parliament member Ali Al Aradi attended the fourth session of the third legislative term of the Arab Parliament in Egypt under the presidency of its speaker, Hada Lastoumi. Al Aradi stressed the importance of the support and the support of the Arab Parliament for the outcomes of the 33rd Arab Summit that took place in Bahrain. He also pointed out that the Arab Parliament will prioritize during the next stage the implementation of the summit's outcomes and the initiatives that His Majesty affirmed during his opening speech. The Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission, the LLOC, has completed translating all Bahraini legislations into the English language, dating back to the first issue of the official Gazette in 1948. LLOC's President, Councillor Nawaf Abdullah Hamza, noted that the translated legislations are now available through the LLOC's website. He said that providing the English version of translation or legislation reflects the advanced status of the legislative sector in Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. He noted that this initiative serves as yet another example of Bahrain's pioneering success across various fields, enabling wider access to Bahraini legislation in line with Legislative Decree 27 of 2021, amending provisions of the Judicial Authority Law promulgated by Legislative Decree 42 of, two of 2002, which permits the use of languages other than Arabic in Bahraini courts. Hamza added that the availability of all national legislation in English enables all concerned parties to learn about Bahraini legislation, which ensures an optimal and secure environment for investments, while also showcasing the development in the sector and its compatibility with international best practices and standards. In international news now, and the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center signed five executive programs with the World Health Organization for Yemen, Sudan, and Syria, announcing amounting to over 19 million US dollars. The first agreement stipulates easing the acute shortage of dialysis supplies in Sudan to reduce the number of deaths. The second will provide medical aid to those affected by the earthquake in Syria. The third stipulates confronting the outbreak of measles among children in Yemen. The fourth stipulates improving water and sanitation services in healthcare facilities with sustainable water supply to serve the most needy in Yemen. And the fourth and final agreement stipulates limiting the spread of cholera in Yemen. Egyptian media reported that humanitarian aid trucks arrived at the Kerem Shalom border crossing coming from the Rafah crossing and began en entering the Gaza Strip. The head of the Egyptian Red Crescent Society in the North Sinai Governorate confirmed that aid trucks have begun entering the Gaza Strip and it is expected that about 200 aid trucks, including four fuel trucks, will enter Gaza today. He explained that the aid will be delivered to the UN on the Palestinian side with each truck carrying between 15 and 20 tons of aid.
Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that the volume of ammunition production in the country has increased 14-fold over the past two years and drones increased by four times and armored vehicles three and a half times. Putin affirmed that most defense industry companies meet government defense requests on time and with high quality and some of them are even ahead of schedule. The General Authority for the Care of the Grand Mosque and the Prophet's Mosque was keen to support people with disabilities, care for them and provide them with means of comfort within Mecca by preparing designated sites so that they can perform their rituals easily. More in this report. The General Authority for the Care of the Grand Mosque and the Prophet's Mosque has equipped the prayer halls with the best tools and services designated for people with disabilities and has provided them with Zimzam water, Quran and booklets to help them perform their rituals. These prayer halls are also distinguished by their proximity to the doors to facilitate their entry and exit and people with disabilities visiting can use any of the three prayer areas for men. The authority has also allocated three prayer areas for women with disabilities, with Tayammum tools, a Quran equipped with a reading pen for the elderly, a number of valuable books, and a cane designated for the blind, in addition to a translation of the Friday sermon in sign language. The authority has also allocated three prayer areas for women with disabilities, with Tayammum tools, a Quran equipped with a reading pen for the elderly, a number of valuable books, and a cane designated for the blind, in addition to a translation of the Friday sermon in sign language. The doors were also equipped with ramps for vehicles, and public transportation was provided for the elderly and people with disabilities across the eastern courtyards of the Grand Mosque via electric vehicles for circumambulation and sa'i, which visitors can utilize and reach through several points. <laughs> 